Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm here today to talk to you all about database indexing. A database table index is a feature that enables you to greatly improve the speed and efficiency of queries made against that table. They can really help when searching through large unordered lists and give the database another tool that it can use to help return the records that you are looking for as quickly as possible. Indexing is an extremely important feature to get to know as your application and your data set size begins to scale. In simpler terms, a table index is similar to an index in the back of a book. If you know that you are looking for a specific piece of information, you are not going to read or skim every single page in that book to get to what you need. You're going to go to the back, you're going to look at the index, so you can find exactly which page the information that you're looking for is on. A database table index works exactly the same. So we've already talked a little bit about what an index is and what they actually do. Now I'm actually going to jump right into a live demo so you can see indexes in action. We'll also talk a little bit about when you should use an index and when you should not be using an index. So let's jump over to Xano and we'll take a look at our database table. So for this example, I have a table with a little over 500,000 records and you can see it's not necessarily a very complicated data set, but that's okay just for the purposes of the example. So we have names, regions, countries, professions, uh, first name and last name, emails, a birthday, and then we have an artist service we'll talk about here in a little bit. And just for reference, all of these queries are performed on a standard launch instance. I do want to be clear that in this video, while you will see the difference an index can make, because I'm not working on an actual live application database, there may be some variances between what you see in your queries currently versus what I see querying this very large table today. So let's first talk about the type of query that we want to perform on this table. So let's say as an example, I want to find all of the users with a certain profession in a certain country. When we think about whether or not we should be using an index, not only do we want to consider the table size, which we clearly qualify for here, but we also want to consider things like how complex the query is. The query that I just described, where we're just looking for users with a certain profession in a certain country, that uses very simple operators. It's just equals. Where we would not want to use an index is, for example, if a user's birthday was on an even numbered day, or if we had an array in this table and we wanted to count the elements inside of that array, an index is probably not going to help that query run any faster. We also know that the data that we're looking for lives in a field with a large number of unique values. There is a little bit of ambiguity there based on your specific data set, but just know that it is important to make sure that the queries that you're building and that you're indexing on are as specific as possible so they return the least amount of records. And we also know that an index is going to be great for this because this table is not written to or updated frequently. Indexing on this table is always going to make my queries faster, but I would also want to consider if this table is written to or records are edited frequently, or maybe I'm changing column names or column types on a regular basis, that index has to be rebuilt with each change to this table. So there can be delays in edits or other write operations to this table. So taking all that into account, we know we're not frequently writing to this table and we just want to get a simple set of records. So let's actually take a look and see what that looks like. So I just have a very simple query all records step here. I'm going to go into my custom query and I'm going to say, I want to find people in the country of United States. And I want to find the profession of artist. So we'll go ahead and save this. So let's go ahead and run this and let's see how long it takes. So for this query, it looks like I'm right around a half a second in execution time. Again, this is going to be a little bit different on a live application, but for the purposes of the demo, this will at least show you what an index can help you achieve. Now let's say, of course, this is not super slow, but I want it to be faster. So I'm going to go back to my table so I can apply an index. So to apply an index, we're going to go up here to indexes in the top menu. And you can see we have two indexes already applied. The primary and the gin index are indexes that are automatically applied and maintained. You don't have to worry about those. But I want to create an index based on the query that I am running. So I'm going to click this create index option. And we have a few different index types that you can choose from. So we'll run through those quickly. 
An index is just a general index. This is most likely the type that you will be using. We also have a unique index, which has the specific job of making sure that a column only contains unique values. We have a spatial index, which is specifically designed for use with our geography field types. And then we have our search index, which is designed for use with our fuzzy search features. So let's choose our country field for our regular index. Now you can see before I save this, we do have an option to add multiple fields to this index. There is some consideration to be made about whether you should have one single index per field, or if you should have multiple fields in the same index, we will get into that shortly. For this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and save that first index. Now it can take a minute or so to build the index based on the size of your table. Let's go ahead and add another one for our profession. And now if you remember those first queries that we were running, we're taking around a half a second to execute. So let's go back to our API and we'll go ahead and run this again. And you can see the execution time for this query is down to 0.03 seconds. We'll run it again, same result. Uh, 0 0.09 seconds, 0 0.06. So you can see we've hit, I think, around a 90 to 95% increase in performance on this query just from adding those two indexes, which is significant. This right here is the most basic and honestly the most perfect example of showing you why indexing is so important when you're considering scaling your application, when your data set size grows, when your user base grows and you have more queries being performed against your database tables, and you need to make sure that those are as fast as possible. Indexing is absolutely something that you should always be thinking about. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about having multiple fields in a single index. It's important to note that your queries need to kind of have a hierarchy to them that makes sense, especially if you are querying against multiple pieces of data that need each other to make sense. Let me show you an example. So I'm gonna go back into my query here and I'm gonna change this a little bit. I'm gonna say that I want to find all of my users where their profession is artist and their artist service is painter. So when we're thinking about this, we have this specific column labeled artist service. That column really doesn't make sense by itself in the nature of the query that we're performing. We need to make sure that this user is an artist before we look at whether or not they have an artist service that they provide. So we can go ahead and save this query and let's just run it once and we can see what this execution time is. So uh, around 0.4 seconds for this one. So 0.4 to 0.5 seconds, it looks like is what we're getting for this query right now. Now, the reason that I wanted to show this query specifically is because it's a great example of when you should consider a single field index versus a multiple field index. Because we have this query that has data that relates to each other, we're not really ever going to query the artist service column outside of this query that we're building right now and outside of also querying along with artists that exists in our database. So that generally means that we are probably just going to want to put both of these fields in a single index. So let's go ahead and build this. So we're gonna add our profession field, and then we're gonna add a second field for our artist service. We'll go ahead and save that. Again, just takes a minute or so to build this index. And we can go back to our API and let's run this again. So we can see we're down to 0 0.03 seconds, 0 0.02. 0 0.03, so very fast on this query after applying that index. And we know that having that single index with the two fields makes sense because I don't have any other queries that touch this data, just as an example. Now, if I wanted to maybe just prepare for the possible scenario where I want to add new APIs that query the data in new ways, and maybe I will use that artist service field separately, I could put two indexes on that table and this query would be just as performant as it is with a dual field index. However, then there's other things that we need to start considering when we're adding indexes to our tables. The first and the most important thing is database storage. When you create an index on your table, you are essentially building an entirely new table behind the scenes that is used specifically to look up the information that you want. The space that your database tables are utilizing can greatly increase. This is really just how a database works, and it is something that you're going to want to always keep in mind as you continue to add indexing to your tables.
because I know for this example, this is the only query that I'm making. I'm not worried about anything else. It made more sense to combine that. So I'm using as little space as possible when building that index. Now there is something else to consider in favor of the single field index. Let's say I have a query that looks at the profession column by itself, as well as this query that looks at the profession and the artist service column. I want to make sure that I have an index that can look at that profession field by itself. So maybe that means I have two single indexes then. So really the point is you want to make sure that you are considering the hierarchy of your queries, how your fields relate to each other in your database table and what makes the most sense. Now you'll notice here that in my database table, I do not have any more complex field types such as JSON, arrays, or objects. We unfortunately are not able to build standard indexes on those fields. So what is our option then? Our option is to use the GIN index. The GIN index is automatically applied and maintained by Xano and will help you to query faster against those more complex data types. So let's take a look at how that works. All right, so a quick explainer video on the GIN index and how it can help when we are querying against uh, a list. So uh, the problem is that uh, we have this big table here. Uh, it's got about 75,000 records in it. And uh, we have uh, one field that is a list. Um, so typically when we're querying against a large table, we want to uh, add an index uh, on that field that we are querying against. However, because this field is a list, we cannot create a standard index against it. However, uh, in Xano, we uh, by default uh, maintain a gin index, which allows for lookups on fields that would use the contains operator. So the contains operator is used for traversing lists and objects. So this is an index that's maintained automatically. We don't have to set this up. It's already there and ready to go. Uh, so let me show you uh, the two queries that I have. So this is the first query. Uh, this is how we would do it in a standard fashion. Um, so I have my custom query. I have my text that I'm searching by. I'm using the in operator and I am using that. I'm searching against that my list field. Okay. Uh, so very standard. Uh, we can go ahead and run this and we can see uh, this is pretty fast. I'm on a pretty performant instance right now. So um, definitely want to take that into consideration, but I want to take note of this execution time. Uh, it's 0.23 seconds, so about a quarter of a second. Um, and that's the same in uh, subsequent runs as well. Uh, we can go ahead and fire this off uh, a few times and we can see that, so it floats around a quarter of a second. In within those 75,000 records, we're dialing this down to a single record uh, that contains this special value. Let's say that this query is too slow for us. We want to make it faster. Uh, we can't index against the list field, so that means that we need to leverage the gin index. And this uh, requires two steps. So the first step is we need to construct a JSON object that matches the schema of the field that we want to look at. Uh, so our field is called my list, and it is of course an array. Uh, and so for the JSON uh, that we're going to use in our query, uh, we start with an empty object and then we use the set filter to set this my list path. Uh, and the value for this is an array. Uh, and that array will contain the value or values that we want to search by. Um, so we use the push filter to add uh, the term special into that array because that is the value that we are looking for. And so what, now that we have our uh, constructed object here uh, in the query, in the custom query on the left side, we're actually just going to select the entire database. So it's this table here. Um, so we just click that and that gives us only one operator to work with, which is the contains operator. And on the right hand side, we select our uh, JSON that we constructed in the previous step that tells this query, hey, I want you to use the gin index and search a field that is a list. We'll rerun this. Uh, we can see we have 0 0.03 seconds and we can run this uh, several times. Uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, so you can see, you know, while neither of these queries um, take a super long time to execute on my own instance, uh, the point is that the difference between them is significant. Okay, so that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helps give you a primer on how indexes work and how you can start to utilize them to make sure that your queries on your larger database tables are as fast as possible. 
Again, it is so important that you are considering indexing as your data set size grows. A lack of proper indexing on a table is by far the most popular reason why we have requests in our support channels asking why someone's app performance is slower than expected. A really telltale sign for whether or not you need to use indexing is if you head to your instance selection screen and you can see your usage graph. The usage graph is split into two types of usage. We have database compute and API compute. Your API compute just has to do with functions inside of your APIs that are not database transactions. So loops, conditionals, things like that. But for database usage specifically, if we see that database compute spike and it's slowing down the rest of the application, that is almost always a matter of not applying indexes properly or just not using them at all. So they can really truly save the performance of your application. Thanks again for watching. Please let us know if you have any questions down in the comments below, or you can reach out to us via support chat inside Xano or on the Xano community. We'll see you in the next one.